Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. I am so tickled to share four brand new crock pot meals with you tonight. They're low prep, full of flavor, kind of fruity, and perfect for summer. So sit back, relax, grab a sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Summer slow cooker style. Tonight we're having slow cooker Italian chicken sandwiches for supper. I can't wait to share this little recipe with you. This is basically a dump and go recipe. We are going to mix up our little sauce to begin with though. Starting with half a cup of Italian dressing. You want to use a pretty good Italian dressing here. I'm using this Kraft Supreme Italian. One teaspoon of sugar. A half a teaspoon of salt. A quarter of a teaspoon crushed red pepper flakes and two tablespoons of tomato paste. We're just going to get it all mixed together and it will be very easy to pour over our stuff in the crock pot then. Now over to our crock pot. Just going to give it a nice spray with some nonstick spray. This recipe called for about a pound and a half of chicken. I'm gonna use three of these kinda of big, but kinda of flat frozen chicken breast from Costco. On top of our chicken, we're gonna put a 14 and a half ounce can of petite diced tomatoes, and I did drain these very well. Then we're gonna pour that little sauce we made up with the tomato paste and seasonings and Italian dressing right over the top. Pop that lid right on the top and I think I'm going to cook mine on high for about four hours. It has been about four and a half hours. The chicken is done perfectly and I am just going to take my meat masher and shred it up right down inside of my crock pot this has been smelling wonderful all day long. The original recipe calls for a quarter cup of fresh basil, but I only use two tablespoons of this chopped basil. If you buy these in the produce section, it lasts up to four weeks once you open it, but it's concentrated. They do some kind of voodoo magic on it, so you only want to use one a tablespoon of this basil for every two tablespoons you would of fresh basil. Then we're just gonna mix that right in. Gives it a beautiful, beautiful color, a little pop of green, and this dried basil has this wonderful flavor. I bought some fresh basil a week or so ago for a recipe, and it just tastes so good to me. When I saw this one called for basil, I just went ahead and got that little package. It was on sale and I just enjoyed that flavor. I knew I would use that up in a month's time. Gonna pop the lid on this and cut it over to keep warm and we got one final step that makes this great. And look what we're gonna do. We're gonna cook up some garlic Texas toast. Gonna cook it according to the package directions. After they've been in there about four minutes, I'm gonna pull them out. I'm going to top two of them with some provolone cheese, put them back in the oven for their last minute of cooking. Just want to get them nice and gooey. This was absolutely amazing. There is no saving the best for last. This was delicious. One thing I will warn you, if you don't eat it on Texas toast, which we ended up finishing this off on regular bread, do make sure that you really squeeze a lot of the juice out. I did leave that juice in mine to keep my chicken nice and moist, but it is gonna come on through that bread, so if you don't have a really thick bread, really squeeze that out when you heat your leftovers up. This would be wonderful in a wrap, over rice, or even just on top of a salad. Friends, we all want to feel as fresh as we can, especially now that the hot summer weather's here. So thank you to Native for sponsoring today's video and giving us so many wonderful options to keep us feeling fresh. Native makes clean, vegan, and cruelty-free daily staples like deodorants, body washes, toothpaste, hair and skin care. Let me tell you about my summer favorites. 
Native's deodorants are aluminum and paraben free, they're vegan and cruelty free, and they're made with clean, simple, effective ingredients that you know, like coconut oil and shea butter. Native has a huge range of scents, but I always lean toward the light and breezy ones. My favorite is the coconut vanilla. It's a beautiful tropical scent that makes me feel like I've just spent a day at the beach. And I guess if I can't be at the beach, I just want to be in a big field of cotton because I also love the powder and cotton scent. It's the lightest and softest scent. If you like a barely there kind of scent, it's the one for you. And this was my first time trying the cotton and lily scent. It smells so pretty. It's got the lightness I love, but just a little bit more of a hint of florals in it. And it's available in the sensitive range, which is Native's baking soda free formula. It's made with coconut oil and magnesium oxide derived from the Dead Sea. I love that the scents are not way overpowering, but don't let that fool you. Native's deodorants offer 72 hours of odor protection, and they all feel so smooth and dry when you're applying them, never sticky at all. Use my link and code Mama Mail to get 20% off your first purchase at Native. This offer is available site-wide, but only for a limited time, so stock up and save. I'll have that link in my description box. Remember, the discount code is Mama Mail for 20% off your first purchase at Native. Today, we're making a slow cooker honey bourbon chicken. I have seen this recipe a long time and been wanting to try it, so today is the day. We begin this recipe by making a sauce. We start with one cup of honey, a half a cup of ketchup. This recipe calls for a cup of soy sauce. I'm not gonna put hardly a cup because I have a little under two pounds of chicken and I'm using this light soy sauce. It has 50% less sodium. I'm not a big fan of soy sauce anyway, so you know, why am I even making this? <laughs> I think it will taste good with the other ingredients, but normally if a recipe calls for just a little soy sauce, I will just substitute Worcestershire sauce. But in this case, I figured I better just use soy since it's one of the main ingredients. This recipe also calls for four tablespoons of oil. Looks like it's time to refill my oil bottle. I'm gonna put in just a little bit of garlic this recipe calls for half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. I'm just putting in a few. The sauce is smelling really good. It feels nice and thick when you stir it because of the honey. I think this will make a really good sticky chicken. Friends, I almost forgot our onion. I don't know where my mind is today, but it's not in this chicken recipe, I don't think. Okay, let's start it out with the little dousing of non-stick spray. Got a couple of nice, large, thick chicken breasts today. And it's okay that they're big pieces like this. I think they'll cook up better. And we are gonna chunk them up when we're done cooking them anyway. So these two should definitely serve three people. It did call for two pounds of chicken. This is about 1.75 pounds. Calls for a little salt and pepper on these, but I think I'm just gonna use black pepper. Now we'll take this beautiful dark sauce and pour it right over that chicken. As per my normal self, I'm getting a little bit of a late start. It's about 2.18. I had appointments this morning. I'm going to pop the lid on here and I'm going to put mine on high and we're going to give it about four hours. I'm going to make some green beans tonight. I just have one little can of cut green beans from Kroger's. I threw in a, probably a tablespoon of butter. I'm just gonna pour in just a little bit of vegetable oil, just plain old cheap vegetable oil. Well, who am I kidding? Vegetable oil is not that cheap anymore. I'm gonna throw a little salt and a little pepper to them. I'm just gonna get them to cooking real hard. And yes, they're already cooked. I always get that question from some people. Why do you cook your canned green beans so hard when you know they're already cooked? Well, I like them that way. And I like to cook the water out of them. Here lately, most of the time, I've been doing them like really home style where I will throw in bacon and even some brown sugar and Worcestershire sauce. And that's really good, but it's kind of rich. And I'll be honest with you, 
Maddie has always liked her green beans like this. She calls them greasy green beans, and she is not a fan with all the stuff in them. So tonight, I thought we'd just do a throwback because we're going to have a pretty strong flavor, I believe, in our chicken. We don't want our green beans to compete. If you've been here long, you know I love instant mashed potatoes. Some of you guys were telling me about these made with chicken broth. They're new, and I do mine just a little bit different. I've only got a cup and a half of water to a bowl here, gonna turn that off. Then I had almost half a cup of some heavy cream left in a little bottle, so I'm gonna pour that in. That will make up my two cups of liquid. Now I'm gonna pour my potato flakes in. Mush them all around, make sure they're covered, but you don't like stir them really good right now. And I may need just a little bit more milk because I did not hardly have a whole half cup of cream. Just using a little milk or cream in here really gives it a little extra creamy flavor. Y'all have heard me say before that I don't have a problem with instant mashed potatoes. Put a good amount of salt and I love black pepper in them. And you gotta have a couple teaspoons of butter. Now we'll mix this together. It also doesn't hurt that I like a little bit of lumpy mashed potato too. <laughs> I like mine to have a little texture to them. Those are really good. The broth really helps with seasoning them. I always put just another couple little pats of butter to melt on the top. It has actually been about five hours. I got a little busy this afternoon. You can see that big sticky sauce. And I'm going to pull my chicken out and chunk it up into small cubes. You can see this liquid is kind of runny, so I'm gonna make a cornstarch slurry out of just some water and cornstarch. Put it in here to thicken this back up while I'm cutting my chicken. If you want it this thin, you can leave it like that. It's perfectly fine, but I like a little bit thicker. You can certainly see that thickening my sauce up made it super, super dark, but I put my chicken in and just kind of covered it all up with that sauce. Also made a bag of this Uncle Ben's ready rice that you just microwave in this bag. I don't like rice, <laughs> but Patrick does. It's something I just never make because I just don't like it. But I always think dishes like this look really pretty served over rice too. So I thought he might enjoy this. I have to say I did it to myself again. Every time I see one of these recipes with this big sticky chicken, I think I just want to do it so bad. I want to love it. It tastes good. It did not taste bad. Patrick said it tastes good, but it's the soy sauce. I'm, I'm just never gonna love it. I'm just never, it's never gonna be my favorite. So I'm gonna quit doing this and I'm just gonna stick to my barbecue honey and go with that. But friends, if you like hibachi, the, all the things that have the soy in them, you're gonna love this, but it just wasn't my favorite. We're gonna start by doing our dicing and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about mangoes. It's not a fruit that we normally grow here in East Tennessee, so it's kind of like an avocado to tell for ripeness. If you kind of push on it and it gives a little bit, it's pretty ripe. The color, they say if you see some yellow and red starting, that's good. That means it's ripening. Also, they say sometimes you can smell it getting like a fruity smell coming out of the end. Just like an avocado, you could put it in a paper bag or something like that to speed up ripening or you can put it in the refrigerator, which is what I did, to keep it from ripening too much because it was gonna be a few days and I may have had it in there too long. You can also kind of cut this like a mango and just kind of go down the sides and then hold this piece in your hand and dice it and pop it out. But this is a stone fruit, so there's like kind of a big hard piece in the middle. I'm just going to peel mine first because I'm just not crazy about trying to hold this big thing in my hand and cut it. Now we're just going to go down the side and just cut right through there. See, there's that piece. Got a little bit in there too. Let's go down this side. The pit. I feel like there's a lot of waste in that. But that right there is harder as a brick and it goes plumb through that far. I cut me and Maddie just some little thin pieces so we could munch on it. It's good and sweet. Now we're just gonna kinda dice it up 
or actually probably chunk it up into tidbit sized pieces. Kind of disappointed in mine. I feel like it's got a lot of bad spots in it. And I'm one of them weirdos that like, I just, I don't want bad spots in my fruit or anything for that matter. I just don't want to see that when I'm eating it. I realize fruits are, you know, not perfect, but I don't have to eat the imperfect pieces. I've also got me some grape tomatoes, probably about 10 or 12 of them. I'm just halfing them. We don't want to forget our red onion. We need about half a cup of this, and we really only needed half a cup of those grape tomatoes. I may went a little heavy on that. Now we're gonna spray our crock pot with some nonstick cooking spray. And now it's pretty much a dump and go process. Putting in our onions. I need that other half, hang on. Okay, now I feel a little bit better about the bottom of that crock pot. Now I am laying down some thin sliced chicken breast. I've got about four of them and I pulled them out of the freezer and put them in the fridge last night. They're almost completely thawed. Now I've sprinkled in a tablespoon of taco seasoning I'm just using out of this little package here. I've measured this out before and I believe these are three tablespoons each. So you could probably just sprinkle about half that in. Now our mangoes go in. And our tomatoes. Now it calls for the juice of two limes. You get about two tablespoons of juice out of each lime, so that means I need four tablespoons, which is also a quarter of a cup. Follow me for more math help. <laughs> I hate math. <laughs> now we're going to come back over the top with a tablespoon and a half of taco seasoning. It is time to lit it up. Let's put it over onto high, and I'm gonna cook it about four hours. Okie dokie, here we are done. And it smells really good. Taco sauce needs to be mixed around a little bit down in there, that last little bit on the top. Now I've got to decide what I wanna do. I was thinking I might just pull out some of these pieces, and I got this jasmine rice. I thought I might serve it like over that for Patrick, and then I thought I might just like do mine on a taco and shred it up. But you know what? I'm kinda thinking it's all gonna be good on taco, <laughs> like in a little flour tortilla. I don't know what to do. First I'm gonna taste a bite of this mango, and we'll buy that tomato. I thought about putting it on top of a salad, too. Oh God, it's hot. Okay, I got another clean fork. It's very good. That stuff is so sweet. But here's what I'm gonna do. I wanna shred it all up, just a little bit, and I just wanna stir it all together. But I want that chicken to get some of this sweetness because that little tomato and mango bite that I had, it was really sweet. I want the chicken to get some of that, like inside of it. I am so glad that I chunked that chicken apart and stirred it together. That was the perfect thing to do. It was so pretty over the rice. And this was one, Patrick was okay with this, you know, his tomato issue, but he was okay with this one. I absolutely loved it. I decided to eat mine with some tortilla chips because I love a sweet and salty together. This was so refreshing and yummy and I loved eating it with the tortilla chips. I can't wait to have it again. We are gonna make us a slow cooker, pineapple upside down dump cake. I'm gonna start with a stick of butter and the first thing I'm gonna do is just rub it all along the bottom of my crock pot. You could definitely use a nonstick spray, but since I have this stick of butter out, it don't take much. I'm just going to use butter. Then I'm going to throw what's left in this glass Pyrex measuring dish, and I'm going to microwave it to melt it. Now that I have that stick of butter melted, I'm going to add in a half a cup of brown sugar. Mix that together really good. I forgot one thing here. This is my handy dandy crock pot leveling device. It's just a piece of cardboard pulled it up. One of my crock pot legs here, that little rubbery knob on the bottoms come off. And it makes my crock pot not sit level. Now we're gonna take this yummy little mixture and add it to the bottom of the crock pot. And you just want to spread that out evenly all along the bottom. If you wanted to, you could throw you some 
like crushed pecans or something like that down in here. Now I'm taking a can of crushed pineapple. This is no sugar added and it is in pineapple juice and I'm not draining this. And we're just gonna spread this all along the bottom. You could definitely use um, pineapple tidbits or anything like that. And the recipe did say, you know, this is gonna be pretty sweet. So you might wanna, you know, make sure it's unsweetened. But quite honestly, this is just what I had in my pantry. If I, mine had been sweetened, I probably just would've used it anyway. Now I've got a little six ounce jar of maraschino cherries. And I did drain these. Whoops, I also rinsed them, but you can still see some of that juice is still coming out. I'm just placing them randomly down in here. You know, I, you don't have to rinse them, but I just, I didn't want a whole lot of redness throughout there. And if I didn't mention, you don't just have to use pineapple. You could use any kind of fruit filling you wanted to in here, but it is a pineapple upside down cake, so I'm using pineapple. <laughs> you can do a pumpkin, a blueberry, whatever kind of upside down cake you want. Now we're gonna use one yellow cake mix. I'm using this one I picked up at Aldi. I prefer them because they have no synthetic colors. <laughs> I'm joking y'all, I've never noticed it saying that before. <laughs> that just struck me as funny. I've also got half a stick of melted butter. Now, I like to mix my cake mix and my melted butter together. You could definitely just dump this dry cake mix right over top of that fruit in the crock pot, then pour this melted butter over it or even cut it up in little pieces. I've done it that way. And once I get it mixed in, this is my family I'm feeding. I just use my hands. They don't mind. <laughs> I wouldn't do this if I was making this like to take somewhere. But if you just get this all incorporated into the mix, you're not gonna have those little dry patches of cake like you end up with sometimes in these crock pot recipes where it didn't get any butter on it. Now I'm gonna take this cake mixture and I'm just gonna sprinkle it all across the top. If you've been here very long at all, you know that I am all about keeping it simple. I like to cut out extra steps that I think are just silly and not needed. I also don't like to dirty up a bunch of dishes that I'm just gonna have to end up washing later, but I don't have to. But this is one case in particular where I feel like the added step in washing the dish is worth it. Everything's looking like it's supposed to. Let's pop a top on it. I'm gonna cook mine on high, and I'll start checking it at about an hour and a half. It'll probably take two hours. These crock pot cobblers, they don't take long at all. You're just looking for the fruit to kind of come up from underneath the bottom and get nice and bubbly. Everybody's crock pots cook differently, so you just wanna keep a close eye on yours. It has been two hours. Look at that. You can see the gooey fruit coming up. And I did actually kind of get right there in that spot just to kind of make sure all the cake was done. If y'all know me, I'm the world's worst for saying, you know, cook it in the crock pot for four hours. Then I'll come back and I'll be like, okay, it's been 12 hours <laughs> and I'm bad to leave stuff too long. But I'm here today and I've watched this. So I feel like it's done. It feels done right there. So we are going to actually just turn the crock pot off. We're gonna leave the lid off this and let it sit here for 30 minutes and then we'll serve it. I said at the first of this video that I didn't save the best for last, but I might have told a fib because I kind of forgot about this. This is so, so good. What is not to love about a pineapple upside down cake, especially in the crock pot? So gooey, so delicious. Of course, you don't turn this out like you do a normal pineapple upside down cake. Just wanted to make that clear. You're not turning your crock pot upside down and dumping it out. Also, if you just wanted to make it in the oven, throw it in a nine by 13 pan, 40 to 50 minutes on 350 degrees. It is absolutely delicious. We put a little ice cream and caramel over ours because, you know, YOLO, friends. It is summer, you only live once. I hope you've enjoyed these recipes as much as I did making them. Let me know in the comments what your favorite one was. Don't forget, if you're interested in native, to check out my description box for that link and use code MAMAMALE for 20% off your first order at native. 
Thank you so much for being here. I love you and I appreciate you showing up every week. Until next time, I send you love from my kitchen.